Before this video starts, I want to let you guys know that if you guys support me on Patreon, which is linked down below in the description, not only are you able to get access to Patreon rewards, but you're able to get access to my RPC package you guys can see here. It's a simple package that when you go to the terminal and run npm run test, it'll begin the RPC for you. It's got complete steps for getting it set up and running on your own. And the way it's provided already is set up to have two buttons and custom images. Once again, the link is down below in the description if you guys want to support me. Hello everyone, my name is Fusion Terror, and we're back again to another video, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make a Discord bot using Discord.js version 14. Now this marks the first episode in our series, and we cut the last one off a little bit short, but the Discord.js version 14 dropped within the last 15-20 minutes here, so I thought I'd get an early start on it, make a video right away. Now throughout this series we're going to go over some of the things that have changed, like embeds are not using a message embed anymore, it's using an embed builder, but we'll get into that in its own video. If you have any ideas for this series, make sure to comment them down below, I'll be reading the comment section. And also consider subscribing and post notifications so you don't miss an upload in the series. So with all that out of the way, in today's video I'm showing you how to get the Discord bot in your server, online, and we're also going to set up commands and events so that you guys can start making commands right off the bat. As always, the websites I show in the video are going to be linked down below in the description for you guys to have easy access. But I just wanted to mention there is the Discord.js docs, and there is the Discord.js guide if you guys wanted to look at that. Now since we're making a bot using Discord.js, we're obviously going to need Node.js for this, so I have the link in the description. You can download the LTS, it should work fine for version 14, but if you want, you can install the current version as well. Also take note that if you're programming a Discord bot, if you don't have an understanding of JavaScript or Node.js, I recommend you guys go take a course on that before going ahead and diving into a Discord bot because you won't really understand this too much. With that being said though, don't get discouraged, I've included a JavaScript and Node.js tutorial course from Code Academy down in the description below. So once you've downloaded and installed Node.js, you can go ahead and install VS Code here or whatever IDE you want to use. I prefer VS Code and I'm going to try and link my icons as well as extensions I use in the description below or provide them in the description below for you guys to check them out. Now once you have both those applications installed to your computer, what you're going to want to do then is go to the Discord Developer Portal. Now I'm logged in with a spare Discord account here and I'm just going to be putting this on a server that I'm going to be developing in. What we're going to want to do is go over to the application section and create a new application and just give it a name. For this instance, I'll just call it v14bot and then hit create. Now that we have this in here, you could import an icon for the app icon if you wanted to. I'll just select this icon I have here, save the changes, and then we can go over to the bot section, click add bot, and then click yes do it. Now from here, unlike the last series, you could actually reveal a token and copy it, but this time you can only reset it since they've now changed it where you require a 2FA code. Um, if you have that enabled, you'll need a 2FA code to actually get your token here, or you can just simply reset it, click yes to it, and it will display your token here that you can copy. Now it's important that you don't share your bot token with anybody else, as this is basically the access key, your password to getting into your Discord bot and controlling it in whatever servers it's in. So it's important that we're going to keep this safe, and we'll use .emv later in our bot to keep the secret. In your case, you want to click reset and then yes do it, and it will display your token right here, and you're going to want to copy it. Note this down like notepad or something for the time being, but don't save it anywhere, you just want to make sure you have it there. Now we can scroll down, we have some options. If you want your bot to be specifically private while you're developing, you can check this, or sorry, uncheck this, so then nobody can add the bot to your server except for those who have, you know, access to the developer portal. Another thing we're going to talk about is it requires OAuth2 code grant, where if you enable this, it's going to ask you when you're resetting your token for your OAuth2 code or your two-factor authentication code. Now, if your application requires multiple scopes, then you may need to fill the OAuth2 flow to ensure the bot doesn't join before your application is granted a token. So just in case your bot's using multiple scopes and permissions like privilege gateway intents, you might want to have that enabled, but for this instance, we're going to keep it disabled. For privileged gateway intents, what we're going to do here is enable all three of these, although as of August 31st, uh, this will no longer be enforced, so we're just going to enable this for the time being. And another thing to note, after August 31st, you, once your bot reaches 100 or more servers, it will require verification and approval for this. So now that we have those three checked, make sure that when you change something, you just hit save changes right here. We can then go over to the OAuth2 section, URL generator, and then we can click on application commands and then click on bot right here and we'll allow administrator permissions within the discord server just so we don't have any permission issues when developing our bot so we can then copy this link so when you go to this link you can then select which server you'd like to put it in in this case i'm going to go discord just version 14 server and then i'm going to continue and then authorize this and then just make sure i'm not a bot by checking that and it's then authorized now if you were to go back into your Discord server that you selected, you'll see that the Discord bot is in the server, but it's now offline. 
Since we've got the token from the Discord developer portal, we can go ahead and implement this into some code and get our bot online. You're going to want to create a new folder on your desktop or wherever you'd like to develop your bots, and then I'm going to call it V14 bot in this case. I'm going to right click and click open with code. Now if you don't have that option, it's because you didn't select it when installing Visual Studio Code, but that's no problem. We can go up to our folder directory here, type cmd to open a command prompt in this instance where it's now in our folder, and then we can type code space dots to open this up with Visual Studio Code. Within Visual Studio Code, we're going to go to our terminal, make a new terminal, we can just run npm init tack y. If you want to put specific information within here, you could, but in this case, I'm just going to change it afterwards since I don't like to go through the entire process. I'm going to change our index.js on our main to src slash bot.js, and then we're going to go ahead and change uh, our test command to just be node dot, and we might change this in the future, but it's good we input this stuff here, and I'll just input the author as myself, Fusion Terror and we're good to go. So now what we can do is npm i discord.js. We can do discord-api-types and then we can also do at discord.js slash rest. And we're also going to add in .env here along with chalk and we're going to use version 4.1.2. Now the reason why we're using chalk version 4.1.2 is because we would need to use type module here um, if we wanted to use the latest version. So in this case, I'm just going to get rid of it and use the older version as it works fine for me. And then I'm going to make a SRC folder within here. And because I put SRC slash bot.js within the main here, uh, we'll go ahead and make a bot.js file within here. Now, this is basically um, going to be our main file. It's going to run our bots. We can add in folders and a bunch of other stuff for our handlers and whatnot afterwards. Um, but the most important thing is going to be our .env file, which you want to make sure is on the root directory of your folder. So if your folder is v14 bots, make sure that it's all the way out, not inside your SRC or any other folders here. Your node modules folder is basically what all your packages are in here. You don't really want to touch this, and we're never going to touch this throughout the series. And the same pretty much goes for our package dash lock.json we're never really going to touch this during the series and we might actually look over the package.json a few times if we needed to hit if we need to change some scripts or something like that so within the env file we can go ahead and put token and we'll just put an equal sign and you're going to want to copy that bot token from the discord developer portal i told you to note down earlier and you're going to paste it within here so for instance your bot token is going to look something like this now don't use mine here because it's not actually going to work and I'm going to regenerate it after this video and that's why I'm showing you this right now. But once you're done that, you can go up to file, save, or just hit control S on your keyboard and close out of this file. So the first thing we're going to do within our code here is we're going to go require and we can open this up and do .env and then we can do .config on the end here so that we can get the contents within our env right here. Now if you had two different applications, one you were testing a bot and um, one application you were having your live bot. Um, some people use bigger projects for Discord bots and want to have a separate application, you know, in a testing server or whatever. You could have two tokens with your ENV. So you could have like token one, token two, and then when we're logging in, we could just do something like const uh, token one, and then token two is equal to process.env. But in this case, we called our token just token, so we're going to get rid of that right there. So. Now what we can do in here is we can do const client and we'll also pass in collection is equal to require and then we'll go discord.js. Within here, then we can also get const fs is equal to require fs as it is installed with node.js as you don't need to actually install it within here. So next we want to go ahead and make our actual clients here. And the big change here in Discord.js version 14 was that clients uh, no longer uses intents the same way. So our intents isn't actually passed in with a number anymore where we can use 32767. Um, we actually have to go ahead and get the gateway uh, intents bits right here. You can now pass in gateway intents bits right here, dot guilds. Um, and basically what this is going to do is allow the permissions um, that it passes in with the guilds intent. Next, what we want to do is we can pass in some of our own data here. So in this sense, clients.commands is going to be equal to a new collection. And then we can also pass in clients. Uh, actually, I guess we won't need any more collections in this. In the future, we'll get into like cooldowns and stuff. But for this tutorial, we're going to just do commands in an event handler. So 
I like to pass in a clients.color um, and pass in an embed color that I'm going to use over and over again um, in the future. But for the sake, I'm just going to keep it left out here. And since we're going to have commands, we're going to need a commands folder within our SRC folder. So we can put commands within here. And we're also going to need events and we're going to need a functions folder just like that. So what we can do now is do const function files or folders, I should say, because we're going to have subfolders. It's going to be equal to, and we can do fs uh, dot read dir sync, and then we can pass in the path here dot slash src slash functions. And the reason why we're passing this in here is because the path to it is src and then functions right here. And then what we can do is we can do a for const folder of function folders. We can then uh, pass in right here some brackets, and then we can say const uh, function files is going to be equal to fs.readersync and open this up in here we can say dot slash src slash functions slash and then with a dollar sign we can open this up pass in our folder here what this is going to do is then get the folder or the files within the folder where we want to filter it to make sure that the files we're getting is um, dot js files or javascript files i should say so we can check to see if the file ends with dot js using an arrow function here I'm just going to right click and format my document to make it look nicer. That's with the extension prettier installed over here. Now beneath here, we're going to do another for loop and then we're going to say for const file of function files. And then we can go ahead and do require. We can open this up here, do dot slash, and then we can do our commands or I guess we're doing our functions. Sorry, functions slash dollar sign, open this up folder, then slash dollar sign, open this up file and then we can pass in our clients afterwards. I'm once again going to format the document so it looks nicer. And basically what we're doing here is we're getting all the folders from the SRC functions. And then with that, we're then getting the files of that folder that are JavaScript files ending in .js. And for each of those files, we're then passing in clients to that file. The reason why we're doing that is then we can call clients dots whatever the function name we want is equal to an async function or just a function if we want to. And that can be used anywhere in our code. So we'll go over to our functions folder and make a new subfolder called handlers and within here we can make a new file and we'll just call it commands.js. So what we can do is then module.exports is equal to and then we can pass in client with an arrow function and then just say clients.commands. Actually I'm going to rename this because I don't like that. Um, handle commands.js is going to be equal to, whoops. Oh my, I didn't like how I did that. Uh, handle commands, and then we're going to change this here. Handle commands is equal to an async, and then we're going to pass this function in here. Since it's the first episode, I wanted to know if you all wanted to see it a bit more zoomed in like this or zoomed out like this. Um, I guess for the rest of the episode, I'll keep it in like this. If my webcam gets in the way, I'll try and edit around it and whatnot. But give me your feedback in the comments. So with this here now, we're going to pass in a few requirements up here. So we're going to do const. We'll do fs is equal to require and then we'll pass in fs here and then down here we can go ahead and do const command folders is equal to fs dot read dir sync whoops dir sync and then in here we can do dot slash src slash commands whoops and then at the end of here we can do a for loop saying for const folder of command folders we can then go ahead and say const command files uh, command files is equal to fs dot read dir sync and then we can get the dot slash src slash commands slash folder and then we can do a filter again to get to the javascript files by doing file with an arrow function to file dot ends with and then dot js right here so when we have a semicolon, I'm just going to format it to make it look nicer. Um, then within here, we can then do another for loop and just say uh, for const file of command files. We can then go ahead and do what we want in here. So in this case, we made a collection for it. Um, we're also going to make a array for it as well. So clients.command array is going to be equal to an empty array right here. Then what we can do is for each of the commands we can do clients.commands.set uh, or if we wanted to uh, we could also do a little cool es6 syntax here and just say 
const uh, commands and we can do command uh, array is equal to and then we can do clients whoops it's a semicolon on the end of there and then we can just say uh, commands dot set and then within here we can do uh, command dot data dot name and then we can set the commands in there and then we can do command array dot push if I can spell <laughs> let me do push we'll push command um, and then we'll do command uh, I believe it's command dot data dot data dot to JSON I believe it's just the command dot data dot, j, dot to JSON so we'll just keep that within there but you can see that we're calling command and we don't actually have it required so we can go ahead and do const command is equal to require and then we can do dot, dot slash src sorry dot dot slash we have to actually go to the actual folder from this directory um, we can go over to commands slash dollar sign folder slash and then we can get the file for it so right here now that we have that command required we can get the, the data from it with the name and we can then convert it to 2json and push it to that array so with all of that done i'm going to format it once again but it looks like it's already done if you wanted to you could do a console log after here just saying console log um, and then saying something along the lines of command whoops command and then you do like command dot data dot name uh, has been registered or we should say has passed through the handler or whatever you'd like to say here um, just so I don't clutter my console I'm not going to include this but this is a good way to keep track of what commands are actually going through this and what aren't now we can close this and we can make a new file in here and we'll call it handle events.js and within here we're going to make a new function do module.exports is equal to client once again and then we can go ahead make an arrow function for this and then say clients dots and we'll do handle events this could be equal to um, an async function and we'll pass this in here um, I'm then going to go ahead and get the const and we'll have to require fs for this sorry const fs equals require and then we'll need whoops fs uh, right here and then we can do const events folders is equal to uh, require yeah event folders is equal to uh, fs dot read dir sync and then we can pass in dot slash src slash events and then we can go ahead and do a for const whoops const folder of event folders we can then open this up and say const event files is then equal to uh, fs dot read dir sync and then we can go ahead and say dot slash src slash events and then slash dollar sign the folder and then we'll go ahead and do a filter once again to get the file uh, that ends with .js. So we can do that like this and we're good to go. And now what we can do with this event file is we can do a loop for that as well. But we're gonna do that based on the folder. So we're gonna do a switch uh, case here and we're gonna do this based on the folder. And what we're gonna then do is if the folder is equal to client, um, because we're gonna have a database in the future so we're gonna have database events for like mongo and stuff so in this case we're gonna have a new folder within the events called clients and for this we're gonna go ahead and register our client events so in this case we're gonna go ahead and say um const events is equal to require and then we can go ahead and say or no we should do another for loop sorry uh, for const file of events files we can then open this up and say const events is equal to require and then dot dot slash dot dot slash events slash and we get the folder although we should know it's the clients um, we can get that just like this and then we can go ahead and say that if the event uh, dot once we can go and do clients dot once and we can pass in the events dot name and we'll do the dot 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 args for what we pass in whoops we can go ahead and then say events uh, dot execute and then we can go ahead and pass in the dot 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 args and the client then what we can say is else events dot on or sorry client dot on events dot name 
Then you can pass in the args here as well, just like this. Oh my, I am butchering my typing today. I apologize. Um, and then within here, we can do an arrow function and say events.execute and then pass in the args right here. And then we can pass in the clients as well. And we're good to go. So um, we forgot to put the file in here. So we're actually just getting the folder. Apologies about that. Now that we have the file within here, we have the proper events and then we can go ahead and execute it. So what we're doing is basically going through the events folder and then for the files in that folder, um, based on the folder we're in, we're then gonna execute the proper events for it. So if it's the client, it's then gonna tell it, you know, if the event's on once, then it's gonna tell the client on once, it's gonna do that event and then so on for the ones that are client on. We can go ahead and close this file here and now we can go ahead and make a new event within our thing here and call it ready.js. So within our event, we can do module.export is then equal to an object. We can do a name for our event, we can pass in ready, and then we can pass in a uh, once, we'll set this to true, and then we can pass in an execute. We'll just set it to an async execute right here. And then we're going to go ahead and pass in the function right here. So what we want to do for this is get the client in here since we pass it into our event. And then we can just console.log and say that when our bucket's online, we'll just say ready now with a bunch of exclamation marks. And we'll say dollar sign clients dot user dots dot tag. Sorry. Uh, whoops is logged in and online. Um, another thing we'll talk about in the future here is setting like custom presences and stuff like custom statuses and whether you're in DND idle mode and whatnot. With this here, we can go ahead and get a message when the bot starts up online saying that it's ready and that the bot is logged in and online. And before we get our bot online, uh, we're just going to make sure that we invoke uh, client with new here in our bot.js because I forgot about that. And we'll fix the typo here on our functions handler so that's then functions and not function. And just to make sure, yeah, we're going to fix the typo within events here as well. And we'll double check, yeah, that's how the command's perfect. Within our main file here, we can then go ahead and call our new functions clients.handle uh, events. And we can call that right here. And then clients.handle commands. And we can call that within here. And then we can do clients.login. And we'll go ahead and log in with that token right here now as i mentioned before if you had two tokens you could do the token one or token two let's say right here and what this is going to do is then if you don't have the first token within your env then it's going to go ahead and use the second token to log in in this case we just have one and it's called token within our env file so we're going to include that right there so what's going to happen now is when we start this file it's going to go ahead and run through our command handler functions handler and event handler and then it's going to log into our bot so now we can go ahead to terminal, new terminal. We can test our code by doing npm run test. And then we're gonna go ahead and start up our bot here. Um, we get our message saying that it's online, but I wanted to explain this first here. The reason why we're calling npm run test is because in the package JSON, we set up our main here as the src bot.js and I accidentally started a debugging session here. Um, but what we're gonna wanna do is basically change this in the future to do whatever we'd like. But since we set up the main as the src slash bot.js, you can call node.js in the terminal here to start your bot, or you can call npm run test. So you can see our bot is ready and it's now online. And over within the Discord server, you should see that your bot is now online. So now that we have your bot in the server online and we have it working with events, we're gonna go ahead and set up some commands. Within our commands folder, we can make a new subfolder and we can go ahead and just call it uh, tools for instance i'm just going to make a simple ping command so we can do ping.js in here and this is going to get our bots ping now for this instance we'll just do module.exports it's going to be equal to and we're going to pass in an object here we can say data and then our data is going to be equal to a new and we're going to do a slash command builder but the difference is here is that const uh, we can go ahead and require it here with discord.js um, discord.js whoops right here and the reason why we're not using the discord uh, slash builders package anymore is because that the slash command builder is now included in the discord JS package. So we can do a new slash command builder and then we can go ahead and do some properties on this here. So dot set name, go ahead and pass in a name for this command. So in this instance, we're just gonna call it ping. We need dot set description. But then here we'll just say um, returns, uh, returns my ping 
meaning the bot when it replies. We can go ahead and end this and do an async and do an execute here for our command. Execute. And then we can go ahead and open this up. Um, for our commands, we're gonna accept interaction from the event. And we'll also go ahead and accept client in here because we pass that in with our command handler, or at least we should have. Um, yeah, we do that within the interaction create event. I forgot about that, so we'll get into that in just a second. But basically, we're passing in interaction and client to our commands. And for this command, we're going to go ahead and do a simple const uh, message. This could be equal to awaits, and we'll do interaction dot defer uh, defer reply. And then what we can do here is then uh, pass in some options and we'll do fetch message or fetch reply, sorry. And we'll just set this equal to true. And then what we can do here is then say uh, const embed. And we'll get into this. Actually, we'll save embed for another video because uh, embeds have big builders and stuff now, so it's a bit different. Uh, but in this instance here, we can say just const uh, message is going to be equal to and we'll just set a new string here and we'll say that's the sorry the new message is going to be equal to um, api latency and then that is going to be the clients.websockets.ping and then we can do a new line and say that's the clients ping is then uh, we can set that's two the message dot created timestamp and then we can subtract the interaction whoops interaction dot created timestamp right here so then what we can do is do await um, we can do interaction dot edits reply and then we can go ahead and pass in our content here and we can go ahead and say uh, our content is now going to be set to our new message and we can go ahead and end that with a semicolon here. So basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna defer the reply and basically say uh, we wanna wait and do this afterwards. And then we're gonna get our new message here and we're gonna go ahead and send the new message. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna have to create a interaction create events, interaction create. Uh, because what happens is when we create a slash command, there's different types of interactions that can happen like buttons, select menus, and we'll get into all these in Discord.js series later on. But what we're gonna do for this one is just do module and we'll copy our ready event actually right here. Uh, but we'll get rid of one thing, which is the once, since it's not set to once. We'll change the name to interaction create. And then we can go ahead and pass in interaction and whoops spell that correctly and then clients as well so now what we can do is get rid of this code here and we have our interaction create event and um, what we're going to want to do first is say if um, interaction we'll say dot is command and then we can go ahead and say that if it is a command we can do our code for the command here now the reason why we're saying that if it is a command is because once again there's different types of interactions so in this case here, we're just going to do, uh, we'll do const and we'll say commands is going to be equal to clients because we're getting our commands collection. And we can just say const command is going to be equal to commands uh, dot get. And then we'll go ahead and also get const commands name um, is going to be equal to interaction. And then we can go ahead and get the commands name in here. And we can say if there is no commands, then we're just going to go ahead and return because there's nothing that exists. Otherwise, we can go ahead and do something for this command. So in this instance, we're just going to go ahead and do try and we'll open a try catch brackets and we'll just do console.error and we'll pass our error in here. And we'll also say await interaction.reply and we'll pass in our information just saying, hey, uh, something went wrong. So we'll just say uh, something went wrong while executing executing uh, this command and we'll just say dot, dot dot so now what we can do is we can also pass in here saying ef i believe it's spelled e p h e m e r a l and we're going to be setting this to true right here basically what this does is makes it so the person who used the interaction will only be able to see this message so within our try here we're going to do awaits and then we'll do commands dot execute and then we can go ahead and pass in the interaction and the clients in here. As we mentioned previously, within our ping command, we're going to need the interaction and clients. So with that done now, 
we can go ahead and we'll just close this terminal because it's actually blocking the view and I apologize for that. Should have got rid of it sooner. Um, but within the interaction create, I'm now just going to format this document. One thing I wanted to mention is that it's not is command, it's uh, is chat. Uh, sorry, I'm just getting rid of this. Chat uh, input command. It's a little weird why they changed it, but there you go. So instead of is command from v13, you want to use is chat input command. And one thing we have to add to our command handler is that we need to actually push this to the API. Earlier, we installed two packages called discord.js slash rest and discord API types. Um, so we're going to be requiring the rest and routes from those. And then we can pass in beneath our for loop here what we're going to do. You're going to want to get a const client ID, which is going to be equal to your bots ID within discord. And then you're going to want to also get your server ID or your guild ID, I should call it. Um, if you want your bot commands to only be usable within your server only. So if you said I only have or I only want my bot to work in my server, then you're going to want to use your guild ID as well. Now to get that, you can go into your Discord profile, scroll down to advance and then turn on developer mode right here. Once developer mode is turned on, you can right click on your Discord bot and click copy ID as well as right click on your server and click copy ID and get the guild ID like that. Now please make sure you're using your IDs here as if you don't, it's then gonna give you an error. We're then gonna call a new rest variable, making a new rest with version nine. And we're gonna set the token equal to process.env.token. We can go ahead and save this here. And then we'll go beneath here and just say a little try catch bracket that I got from the docs. Um, basically what this is gonna do is it's then gonna go ahead and start registering the commands that we've put. And instead of the body being commands here, um, we've called guild ID and client ID here so that's good but instead of commands here we're gonna do command array because up here we called command array right here from the client so um, with that being said now if you're using just guild commands um, meaning you just want them in your server um, then you have a guild ID passed in here with the application guild commands otherwise you would just be doing app application command sorry um, where it then just takes in an application ID right here and you would be passing in your guild ID also, with that being said, if you're using um, a multi-command bot, or I should say where you're using the application commands in multiple servers, it could take time to update from server to server when you keep committing changes or restarting your bot over and over. So in this case, I'm just going to do application guild commands and then pass in my client ID, guild ID here, as well as my command array. And then I'm going to just go ahead and format this. If there's any errors, it's going to console error it and we're good to go. So now what we can do is go over to our terminal, new terminal, and do npm run test once again. This is gonna start up our bot. Uh, we get a little issue here though, saying that command array is not defined. Um, I believe we called it though uh, right here. Oh, that was within our for loop, that's why. Um, so we can just go ahead. Uh, we'll just do client.command array just to avoid more clutter in our code. We can save that, do control C in our terminal. Um, hit Y to close this. I'll just clear it and then restart our bots. Uh, npm run test. And then we are good to go. Our bot is now registered the commands as it should have and is now online and logged in. Within the Discord server here now, if we were to run ping, you can then see our ping command show up here. Or if we were just to do slash within the Discord server, we can see our command registered here. So we can go ahead and select the ping command, hit enter. Um, it's going to say it's thinking and then it returns with our API latency as well as our client ping. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and run this once more just to double check to make sure. And it's thinking and boom it returns with the API latency and the client ping. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to make a Discord bot in Discord JS version 14 and setting it up and getting it started in your Discord server. There's going to be many more episodes of this series here so please do subscribe with post notifications and hit the like button if you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you everyone for your support. If you want to support me on Patreon, it's linked down below in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.